Okay, I'd like to talk to you about um, torque and cross product. Uh, it turns out that torque is very important to rotation, just like force is very important to um, linear motion, acceleration, torque is very important to rotational motion. In fact, um, there is a law, Newton's first law of rotation, that says that um, an object will remain rotationless or continue to rotate with constant angular velocity unless acted on by a net external torque. Well, this sounds a lot like Newton's first law of, of motion uh, for linear motion. An object will remain at rest or, or continue in straight line motion unless acted on by an, an outside force, a net external force. Well, things will just continue to rotate unless you change their rotation by putting a torque on them. So let's talk about torque for a second. Um, let's imagine I have a wrench and I'm trying to loosen this bolt. That would be this wrench and I'm trying to loosen the, this bolt. Okay, um, I would not want to, if I were trying to loosen this wrench, this bolt, I would not want to put a force on the wrench this way. That doesn't do anything to loosen it. Pushing that way doesn't doesn't loosen the bolt. Uh, pushing this way would though. If I pushed like right here, it would it would tend to loosen that bolt. But I could even be able to loosen it if I if that doesn't work. I would move out a little bit and and push from a little further away, and a little further more away. So the torque is just what I'm what I'm giving this bolt right now is a little bit of torque. It's a little bit of twist. Uh, let's define torque before we go on. Let's define torque. Torque will be, uh, according to your book, it's the quantitative measure of the tendency of a force to cause a change in an object's angular velocity. Okay, the quantitative measure of the tendency of a force to cause a change in an object's angular velocity. So you see this? You see that bolt? I would like to change it. It doesn't have any angular velocity, and I'd like to give it some. So to give it some angular velocity, I'm going to put a torque on it. And um, what I'm going to, I'm not going to put a, a force this way. This would put no torque on the bolt. Um, this would put some torque on the bolt if I put a force this way. Uh, this would put a torque on it. But um, this would put the most torque on it if I if I put the force way out here. If I put a big force way out there, and if this is perpendicular. Okay, so um, torque then it it not only depends on how big the force is, but it depends on where it's located from from the axis of what you're trying to rotate. And it, and it also depends on the orientation of the force. So like this might be a really big force, causes absolutely no torque. It won't rotate that bolt at all. This um, can be a really big force, but because it's so close, it doesn't cause near as much torque as this force out here. And so this is the equation for torque. To get a torque, well, first of all, the symbol for torque is not a T, but a tau. Okay, that's that's um, pronounced tau. Um, it's a Greek letter, and it's and um, this is the symbol for torque. And torque, which is a vector quantity. I'm going to tell you about all the vector natures of these a little later on. But torque is going to be equal to uh, a lever arm distance. So how far you are away from this, the axis of rotation. So it's the lever arm distance times um, the force. But the only thing that matters is the force that's perpendicular to the lever arm. So uh, here 
like for instance with this force right here let's say it's pushing right there here's the lever arm that would be R here's the force but the only part of the force that matters is this part of the is this part of the force is the part that's perpendicular okay so if you have if you're trying to put a torque on say this thing right here um, then if you put a force this way this would be R this would be F but you only want the part of that that's perpendicular Another way of writing that then is if you put, here's, R is a vector, R is a vector as well. It's the vector that goes from the axis to the point where the force is being applied. There's the vector R. If you put these two tail to tail, Well, the only part of the force that you want is the part that's perpendicular to R. So if this is theta, you only want F sine of theta. If theta is the angle between the two vectors, then you only want F sine of theta. So the torque is R times F sine of theta. That's not a subscript, that's R times F sine of theta. Well, um, another way of writing that is we can use the cross product. Torque is equal to R cross F. Hey, because this, this is a cross product, this cr cross product actually, actually gives us a vector quantity. It's sometimes called the vector, uh, vector product as opposed to the scalar product. So this is a cross product because we use a cross to designate it as opposed to a dot. But it's also called the um, vector product because when you take the product of the two, you actually get a vector. Okay. So let's, let's not talk in terms of torque right now, but just in terms of just A cross B. If I have two vectors, A and B, and they're tail to tail, A cross B, um, is going to equal another vector C, let's say. And the magnitude of C is just going to be the same as if you, if the magnitude of C is going to be the same as if you took the part of A that was perpendicular to B. So the magnitude of C is the magnitude of A perpendicular to B. multiplied multiplied by the magnitude of B. So I'll write that in, in math terms now. The magnitude of C is going to be equal to the magnitude of A that's perpendicular to B times the magnitude of B. See, because sometimes all we want is the part that is perpendicular. And so that's why the cross product is going to be important. See you in the next video.